In Creo Parametric, you can save a bunch of features from a part model into what's called a user defined feature or UDF so that you can place those features in other models. Let's take a look at how to do that. In a previous video, I created this part model for a spline coupling, and I want to take those features and store it in the UDF. Before I start doing that, though, I recommend that you set your working directory to wherever you want the UDF to be stored so you don't have to go hunting around for it later. I will go to File, Manage Session, and then select Working Directory. And I store my UDFs in a folder called C Creo and then UDF. So let me go to that folder and click OK. Now to start the creation process, you will go to the Tools menu. And then we have our UDF library command. When you click on that, that will open up the menu manager in the upper right hand corner of the graphics area. And the very first command in here is to create the UDF. And here we have a message information window where we are going to type in the name of the feature. And I will call this my spline, just to be simple, and then hit the enter key. And now in the menu manager, we have a couple different options, standalone or subordinate. Standalone means that the features will not be connected to this part model, but subordinate means that it will be connected to this part model in case I ever want to modify the UDF later on. And I think I do, so I'm going to leave the default choice of subordinate. Then I will click Done. And now we have the model dialog box that's used to create it. There's a whole bunch of different things that you can put in here to make it do a lot of different things. So for example, you can have variable elements, variable dimensions, variable parameters, family table, pro program, but I'm not gonna do any of that. I'm just going to select the features that I want to use. And so I will start off by selecting the first feature that I want, which is a datum analysis feature that measures the diameter of the shaft that it's going to be placed on. Then I will hold down the shift key and select the last feature so that way I get an inclusive list. Then I will go over to the old style menu manager and click OK and then done and done return. Yes, this is how you created features back in Pro Engineer 2001 and earlier. For some reason, the interface for defining a UDF has not gotten a facelift since then. So now I am in the process of writing prompts for the various different references. And you'll see in the graphics area that there is a surface that's highlighted, but now it's asking me in the message area, this reference is used by multiple features. Do I want to specify a single prompt or multiple prompts? Well, I'm happy with this cylindrical surface being used for whatever purpose. So I'm gonna write a single prompt for it. Then I will hit done return. And now it wants me to know what do I want the prompt for this surface to be? So I'm going to call it cylindrical surface. And that's what the user will see when they're trying to place this later on. So I'll hit the enter key to accept that. And now it highlights the end surface. And once again, it's used for multiple different references. Well, do I want to write a single prompt or multiple prompts? Let's use single once more. Oh, actually, it's highlighting the body for the part, and I'll just call it body. That's one change that was added after Creo 7.0. For your UDFs, you do have to specify what body they will be assigned to. Now it's got the end surface. Let's do single prompt, and I will write end surface. And let's see, now it's highlighting the axis. I will choose single prompt, and let's write center axis and so now it's highlighting a vertical plane that was used for doing the sketch of the actual cut let's call this the vertical orientation reference plane probably more words than I need but whatever and now it gives me the chance to rewrite the prompt so for example it's highlighting the surface and it's saying the current prompt is cylindrical surface. So this gives you a chance to modify them in case you mistyped anything. But 
I'm happy with that. Let's hit done return out of here. And in the message area tells me that all elements have been defined. I'm not going to add any of the other bells and whistles into what can go into a UDF. Let's just click the OK button. And so now it tells me that the group spline has been stored. Now I can place this into other different models. And so let's take a look at an example of this. And again, the point of the previous video was to make this model so that it automatically created my spline coupling that was the correct size regardless of the part into which it was placed. So let's take a look at an example of that. I'm going to create a brand new part. I'm not even going to bother renaming it. And let's just sketch on a plane. And I will sketch a circle for the shaft diameter. And I'm not even going to bother changing the value. Let's hit the check mark and then extrude this and extrude it some distance. Again, I'm not even going to bother changing it. Let's just hit the middle mouse button. So now I want to take that UDF and place it on this other shaft. I will click on the user defined feature command on the model tab and let's select our UDF. Here we have the insert user defined feature dialog box. There's a box here to make the features dependent on the dimensions of the UDF. I'm not going to check that. That was sort of the point of having the datum analysis features so that it will automatically measure the diameter of the shaft and resize the spline coupling automatically. Here we have advanced reference configuration. And so this is so we can map the different references from the UDF. In other words, answer the prompt that I defined when I created the UDF. Let's click the OK button. And here we can see the reference model in the accessory window. It's a little big. I'm going to make it smaller and just move it a bit out of the way over here. And so now for the different prompts, the first prompt that it wants to know is what is the cylindrical surface? Well, I'll pick this cylindrical surface. And then which body should it go to? I'll pick this body. And then you can see here it's highlighting the end surface. Let's pick this end surface. And then for the center axis, well, let's go down here and turn on the axis display. That way I can pick this axis. And then want to know what I want to use as the vertical orientation reference. Well, I will just pick the datum plane called right out of the model tree. And we can see a preview of the features. In the user defined placement dialog box, it tells me that the placement succeeded. And right now I can hit the check mark. Just be aware that there are a few other different things that you can do inside of here. First off, if you go to the options tab, well, you have the ability to keep the dimensional values or scale by a factor. Also, you can control the display of any dimensions that were not defined as being variable when the UDF was created. And so right now it's set to unlock, which means that after placing this UDF, a person can edit the definition of the features and change the different dimensional values. If you choose lock, well, any of the different dimensions in these features that were not defined as being variable dimensions will not be capable of being changed. And then there's hide. This means that any of the dimensions that were not defined as variable dimensions won't even be visible to you. Next up, you have the ability to edit the definition of any of the features of that UDF when you're placing the UDF. Well, I don't need to do that. Then we have adjustments. And this deals with the different orientations that you have for your feature. So for example, when you have a, a an orientation reference plane for a sketch, it can point one direction or the other direction. Well, this is where you can flip those different things. And the properties tab, that's where you can rename the local group that will be created in the model tree. But I'm happy with everything. Let's hit the check mark. And so all those different features are placed in our model. And regardless of those really huge dimensions that I used, our spline has the right proportions. If you take a look at the model tree, we now have a local group that contains all those different features from the UDF. 
So that's how you can create a user-defined feature and then place that user-defined feature in other models. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.